So, we continue with our discussion on the various features of the language Verilog. So, in this lecture we shall be discussing about the various Verilog operators like in any programming language well you can take as, as an analogy C, C plus plus or Java there are some operators which are built in the language which can operate on some data items, some numbers, some characters, some values and they produce some results. So, in the same way in Verilog there are a set of operators as you shall see some of them are very similar to the operators which are available in high level languages like C or C plus plus, but there are a few others which are very specific and they have some direct connection with the hardware that Verilog is supposed to model. Okay. So, uh, we start with this lecture on Verilog operators. So, we start with the most basic kind of operators which you see in any language, the operators that allow us to carry out some arithmetic. These are the so called arithmetic operators. Now, broadly speaking if you just think of the arithmetic operators, so these operators can be broadly classified into either unary or binary. Unary means this oper this kind of operator will be operating on a single operand or data item, binary means it will be operating on two data items. Well, some examples of unary are you are quite familiar with this kind of notation you can write plus a or we can write minus b, these are something which is quite valid in expression, we can write minus within parenthesis let us say a plus b. So, these minus and this plus these are unary operations, they are working on a single data item. So, in the first case this is a, here this is b and here this is this whole thing, this minus is operating on this whole thing. And in contrast uh, the binary operators, they operate on two data items like, like a plus b when you write. So, this plus is operating on a, my a plus b, a minus b, a multiplied b and so on, there are several others. Okay. Let us see. So, in Verilog the operators that are supported are as follows. So, you have two unary operators one is plus, one is minus and among the binary operators some of them I have already mentioned, you have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, modulus means you divide by the second operand and take the remainder and double star means exponentiation. Some of the examples are shown here, this is an example of a unary operator minus while this plus is a binary operator. Here minus star and plus these are all binary operator. This minus is working on a and b, star is working on c and d and this plus is working on this first number and the second number. Similarly, this slash mod exponentiation this means a to the power 3. Okay. These are the so called Verilog operators and, 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 and here as you see that the Verilog operators are somewhat very similar to what we see in the other programming languages like C with the exception of the exponentiation operator. The others are I means almost the same as those available in the language C or C plus plus. Okay. Fine. So, let us move on. So, we now look at logical operators. Well, uh, when we talk about arithmetic operators, we are operating on some numbers. Numbers can have some values which we can add, subtract, multiply, divide and so on. When you talk about logic operators, we are considering logic values true or false 
and we can combine several such logic values into a single result which is again a logic value true or false these are the so called logic operations or logical operations. So, in Verilog there are three kinds of logical operators that are supported negation which is not logical and which is denoted by double ampersand and logical or which is denoted by double bar. These are again very similar to the language C or C++ such things are available there also. So, these operators are used in some conditionals well here I have not shown the complete examples I have only shown the logical expressions, but, but actually you will be using this in some kind of control constructs like, like let us say an if then else statement. So, you are aware of if then else kind of statements. So, when I specify a condition in an if statement, so I can use this kind of logical operators in that condition expression. Okay. So, some examples of condition expressions are shown here done and ack. So, here it is assumed that done and ack are both logical expressions or values true or false and you are defining the logical and. Now, the way this logical and is defined it is just follows the and operator like say if you have two operators two operands a and b and the output which is a and and b then if both are false this will be false if one of them is false then also it will be false only when both of them are true then only this expression will be true. So, this is how this AND operation is defined. Similarly, you can have this OR A OR B where A is a logical expression B is another logical expression which has again values true and false and they are combined with an OR. So, just to recall the OR operation will be defined as follows. So, when both of them are false then the OR operation is false, but if at least one of them is true false true true false or true true then this expression would sorry sorry this will be true this expression will be returning true. This is the definition of OR. So, if at least one of the inputs are true then the expression will be true and the not operation is just the logical negation. So, you have a single input and you have not of a if a is false a not a is true if a is true not a is false right. These are the three logical operators which are supported by Verilog. So, here you can see some other examples are given of logical expressions not a and and b. So, here this a and b will be done first then not of that here there are two expressions in, uh, means a greater than b this will be either true or false c equal to 0 this will be a true or false and you are combining them using this or. Similarly, here there are two a greater than b b greater than c. So, you are first doing not of this then you are combining these two using and. Okay. So, the point to note is that, so while you are evaluating such expression like when I have written dan, done and and ack, the values of these two variables done and ack, if the value is 0 then it will be treated as false, but any non-zero value will be treated as true and, and he, as I said the logical operator will return the value again either true or false, but the values will be 0 for false and 1 for true that is the convention which is followed in this kind of logical operations. Fine. Now, let us come to the relational operators these are again a very standard feature in any programming language we often have to compare 
two numbers to check whether they are greater, less than, equal and so on. So, these relational operators are used for that purpose. So, they will be typically taking two numbers as input, they will be doing some kind of relational operation and the result that they will be giving you will be true or false. Let us see. So, in Verilog six such relational operators are supported not equal double equal to sign means equal greater than or equal less than or equal greater than less than. So, some relational expressions are as follows a not equal to b a plus b equal to c minus d a greater than b and c less than d count less than well these expressions you can use in some control constructs which we will be studying later like if then else or while or for this kind of control constructs. Okay. All right. So, here as I said, so a typical relational operator like say a not equal to b, they operate on numbers. So, it is assumed that both a and b are numbers and the result that is generated, it will say whether this condition is true or false. So, it is a Boolean value. Right? These are true for relational operators. Next, there are some bitwise operators. Again, these bitwise operators, not exactly all of them, some of them at least are available in a language like C. So, Verilog is supposed to model a hardware and at the level of hardware, we talk about bits, we talk about the logic operations. So, these bitwise operations are very important in Verilog, because at times when uh, we just model some logic expressions at the bit level, we use this kind of bit level operators. Okay. So, the bitwise operators that are supported are bitwise not is denoted by this tilde symbol, single ampersand means bitwise and single bar is bitwise nor hat is exclusive or and tilde hat is exclusive nor. So, we have already seen some examples earlier where you have used the assign statements to model some combinational functions. So, here again I am showing some examples where some of these operators are used. You see we have defined some variables a b c d f 1 f 2 f 3 f 4 as wires it is in the first statement we have said assigned f 1 equal to not a or b. You see these are all bitwise operators, first the value of a is inverted not of a, then that value is bitwise or with the value of b. Similarly, in the second statement uh, which is actually similar to the evaluation of the carry of a full adder. So, you take the end of a and b, b and c, c and a and then or them together. F 3 is take the exclusive or of three variables a, b, c, a x or b, x or c and F 4 says a and not b or b and c and not d. So, in terms of a Boolean expression, this is similar to a b bar or plus b c d bar. Okay. So, bitwise operators as it said, they operate on bits, all the operators are single bit variables, they are not vectors and they return a value f 1, f 2, f 3, f 4, those are also of type bit, single bit. Okay. These are something to remember. Okay. So, here we have something which is normally not present in the the kind of hardware uh, or the high level languages with a family with like C or C plus plus. These are called reduction operators. Now, what is a reduction operator? Reduction operator is trying to reduce a set of items into a single item. This is from where the name reduction comes. So, let me give you an example. Suppose, I have a word you can treat it as a vector a multi bit word. So, I 
just operate on these bits using one of the reduction operators. This is a reduction operator. So, what the reduction operator will do? It will take all the bits of my input word as input, this is there are multiple bits and it will be generating a single bit result as the output. This is what is the purpose of a reduction operator. It converts multiple bits in a variable into a single bit of result. Okay. Let us see. So, this is actually what uh, we have just said. It accepts a single word as the uh, as input and it will produce a single bit as output. So, it operates on all the bits of the word. So, what are the kind of reduction operators available? Single AND is bitwise AND, this is bitwise OR, tilde AND is NAND, tilde bar is NOR, this is XOR, tilde hat is exclusive NOR. Well, how we just use this kind of reduction operator? It is simple. Suppose I have a variable, let us say I have declared a variable let us say of type wire, let us say 4 bits, I call it x. So, I can write somewhere, let us say I have defined another variable a single bit variable called y. I can write y equal to ampersand x. This reduction operators are all these are unary operators, this is something to also remember. They operate on a single data item or operand. So, this ampersand works on a single data item x and this is your reduction operator. Reduction op. So, what this reduction operator is doing? It is taking the bitwise and of all the 4 bits of x. This x was 4 bits. So, actually logically speaking this will be like an and gate, this is your x and the output of the AND gate will be your y. Right? So, this reduction operator actually models a gate with multiple number of inputs. This ampersand x means this is an AND gate, it will take all the bits of this variable x as input and it will generate this y as the output. Right? So, depending on the kind of operator you have used, so the type of this gate will differ. Like as I said we can have so many different types of gates. Well, some examples are shown here. So, you see, so here we have defined three words A, B, C. These are vectors of size 8, 7 to 0 and we have also declared three single bit variables of type wires f 1, f 2, f 3 and a, b, c we have just, just initialized them with some value. Well, here just you can assume for this example at least that this instead of 7 you can consider it as 3. So, there is no harm in that, and so it will be easier for you to understand. So, let us assume these are 4 bit numbers. So, I am initializing a, b, c with this 4 bit constants. 0 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 0. So, my uh, just initial values are A is 0 1 1 1, B is 1 1 0 0 and C is 0 1 0 0. Right. Now, the first reduction operator I am using here in this example, this says f 1 equal to x or a, which means it will do a bit by bit x or of all the bits of a and it will generate f 1. So, what will be the f 1? So, f 1 will actually be the bit by bit x or of these 4 bits. So, it will be 0 x or 1 x or 1 x or 1. So, you know x or actually counts the number of ones whether it is odd or even 
here since it is odd number of ones the result of the XOR will be 1. Similarly, here F 2 is actually doing A XOR B and end of that that means, this is your reduction operator first A and B you are taking an XOR. So, let us see A is this B is this. So, A was 0 1 1 1 B was 1 1 0 0 you take an XOR first XOR operation. So, 1 and 0 is 1 1 and 0 is 1 1 1 is 0 0 and 1 is 1 this is your XOR and then you are using a reduction operator ampersand you are taking end of all these 4 bits 1 0 1 1 because at least 1 0 is there the end operation will give you a result 0 right. So, your F 2 will be 0. Uh, the third example says you do a reduction operator on A, then you do a AND on another reduction operator on B. So, this is XOR and this is XNOR. So, XOR on A, then XNOR on B, AND of that. This is a logical operator. Okay. Let us see, this is a bitwise logical operator. First, let us do not this XOR of A. So, XOR of A, what will be the value? So, already you have done it bit by bit XOR of A, it will be 1 and XNOR of B. So, you do XNOR, so there is even number of 1s in B. So, for even number of 1s, XNOR becomes 1. So, you take AND of these two XOR A and X naught P. So, 1 and 1. So, result will be 1. So, your F 3 will be 1. Right. So, this example has to show you how these reduction operators work. Next comes the shift and conditional operators. <coughs> now, the first two kind of shift operators are available in a language like C which simply specifies right shift or left shift. So, here let us say in the example I have given we have defined two variables data and target a vector of size 16. So, if I say data right shift by some number 3 it means you shift it right. So, when I have a data in a register in a vector I shift it right by 3 positions and when I shift it right zeros will be inserted on the left. Okay. Similarly, when I shift it left then zeros will be inserted on the right. So, this is the shift right operator and the shift left operator. So, I can specify by how many bits I am shifting. right? So, I can shift it here in the example I am showing I am shifting it by 3 positions, but there is a special version of right shift which is specified by 3 greater than symbols 3 greater than means arithmetic right shift. So, what does arithmetic right shift means? Well, in arithmetic right shift in order to understand uh, its I mean its basic purpose you need to understand the two's complement number system very clearly. So, just to refresh your memory, so here in the two's complement number system, whenever you represent a number, the most significant bit will indicate the sign, one means negative. 0 means positive. Right? So, the other bits will be something let us say and the other bits will be something. Now, for a 2's complement number for, for any number in fact, if you do a shift right, shift right is actually equivalent to division by 2 shift right by 1 position. 
and shift left means multiply by 2. Now, for a two's complement number if you want to implement shift right the rule is that if the number is negative for negative numbers you shift in 1 and for positive numbers you shift in 0. So, you see to implement such this is called arithmetic shift because we are doing some arithmetic operations here. To implement this what you have said is that you see for a normal right shift we said that always 0 will be inserted, but now we are making some changes here we are saying not 0, but whatever was the sign that same sign bit will be inserted. If it was negative 1 will be inserted, if it was positive 0 will be inserted right. So, this is denoted by 3 greater than. So, here you have an example data arithmetic shift by 2 positions. Well, here exactly this thing is available in a language like C, we have a conditional operator. So, we specify a conditional expression, then a question mark, then an expression colon another expression and finally, semicolon. The first expression here will mean that if the condition is true then you take this, if the condition is false then take this. So, some examples are shown here let us say wire 70 x y z these are 8 bits. So, I have written some condition b greater than c. So, I have said if b is greater than c the true expression is this then b else c you assign this to a. What does this mean? This means you assign the greater of b and c to the variable a. If b is greater then this b will be assigned, if b is smaller it will be false then c will be assigned. Okay. Similarly, here another example if this uh, let us say x and y if these are uh, means equal this is the condition then you take x plus 2 else you take x minus 2 and you assign it to another variable z. Well, this is just example this a b c x y z you can have anything right. So, this kind of operator is also available and you have something called concatenation operation where just I am showing an example within curly brackets I can specify two or more items separated by commas like a comma b a comma 3 bit 101 comma b. This will mean all these 3 items or all these 2 items will be concatenated together, they will be concatenated together to form a single vector. Suppose a was a 4 bit vector, b was a 3 bit vector, if I write concatenate a comma b it will become a 7 bit vector, a and b will be joined together. Okay. And we can use this replication operator along with concatenation, where I can use a constant n followed by something within curly bracket. This will mean repeat n times, like the last example shows. This is an example where I am concatenating three things first is 2 bits 1 0, second is 3 times 2 bit 0 1. So, so, what would it mean? You start with 1 0, this is the first one, then I am saying 3 times 0 1, which means 0 1, 0 1, 0 1, and the last item is a undefined x. So, there will be an x in the end. So, my final concatenated result will be this 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 x, it will be a 9 bit vector. So, let us see some examples very quickly. So, here there is an example which shows some of the operators in use. This is a module complete module description x and y are inputs outputs and f and f 1 and f 2 x and y are defined as 10 bit vectors. So, f 1 is a 5 bit vector f 2 is a single bit vector. So, here you see here I have 
we taken cross sections from the vector x and y from bit number 420 to make it 5 bits. I have done bit by bit and and have assigned it to f 1 because the size of f 1 was 5 right. f 2 is a single bit. So, I can take any single bit from x any single bit from some other uh, let us say f 1 f 1 3 I do a not then I do a bit by bit wise or this x I do a reduction operator NAND I assign it to f 2. This is a conditional well I am assigning something to f 1. So, f 1 is a 5 bit if f 2 is true then this 5 bit is assigned x bit number 5 6 7 8 9 this will be assigned. If f 2 is false, then these 5 bits 0 1 2 3 4 these will be assigned. Okay. But there are some examples. So, here we are showing the behavioral description of an 8 bit adder. So, here we are assuming that the number input numbers are in 1 and in 2 c in is the carry in and this is the sum and this is the carry out. So, because it is an 8 bit adder this in 1, in 1 and in 2 will be 8 bits. Uh, this c in is the carry in sum is 8 bits and c out is carry out. So, we can express this in behavioral way in a single statement like this, Well, of course, the addition will be this in 1 plus in 2 plus carry in, but you see when you are adding 2 8 bit numbers the result can be 9 bits because there can be 1 bit of carry coming out. So, if you want to keep everything of the result intact it will be 1 bit more. So, how have I specified it here? I have just written C out comma some concatenation which means the left hand side is a concatenated item which represents 9 bits. So, this after this addition the most significant bit will go into C out the remaining 8 bits will go into sum okay, that will be the result and this is just a delay that can be used for simulation. And just we talked about so many operators, uh, just talking about the operator precedence, this chart actually shows you uh, just overall picture how the precedence varies. So, this is lowest priority and this is highest priority, and means operators on the same line have the same precedence. And excepting the last operator, the conditional operator, so all other operators they are left to right associative means suppose I write a plus b plus c this will mean first this leftmost addition will be done then the next one will be done left to right. Okay. Now, you see the highest priority are the unary operators plus minus not not there are two different notations either this or tilde then means then are the arithmetic operations. So, among the uh, just arithmetic operations you have exponentiation in the uh, highest then comes the other operators multiply divide mod. Well, here I have not shown then we will come addition subtraction will be there. So, I have not shown all the operators in fact, then the shift operators, then the relational operators and the relation operator the less than greater than are the higher priority and equal to not equal to checking will be lower priority. Then comes the bitwise operators and is the highest priority then XOR then OR this is what the priority values which Verilog assumes then the logical operators double ampersand double OR and lastly the conditional. Now, here you see for equality checking I have talked about double equal to and not equal to here you see there is another type of equal to triple equal to and not triple equal to. So, let us very quickly talk about this thing. So, so we have equal to and not equal to. So, we are saying there is another version where we can write it like this. Now, when you specify this, this means you check for equality following a rule like this. Suppose I am checking 
two numbers a and b. Okay. Let us say a is the current value is 1 0 1 undefined x, b is 1 0 1 0. So, if you make the comparison then you see this x and 0 will be compared and x and 0 this will be considered to be matched, but when you are using 3 equal to then this means exact equality. So, if a is 1 0 1 x and b is also 1 0 1 x then only this equality will be returning true. Okay, you recall that in Verilog we have a 4 valued logic system where the logic value supported are 0 1 uh, do not care or undefined and high impedance z. So, so, if you write triple equal to then these values are matched in an exact way x and x z and z 0 and 0 1 and 1, but if it is double equal then it is not done that way. Okay. This is just the only difference. Right. So, these are few things which I have already mentioned most of them and the first point is a little different. Let us say when you are using an arithmetic expression, let us say we are using a and b two numbers we are adding a plus b. Let us say a is a vector b is also a vector. Suppose for one of the number let us say a one of the bits is having a state x. So, when you do the addition the entire sum will become x this is the rule of arithmetic operation. Okay. So, the presence of either an x or a z in any variable which is used in arithmetic expression will result in the result in the value of the whole expression to become unknown x. So, all the bits will become x and this we mentioned logical operators generate one bit result, relation operators also generate one bit result, false is 0, true is 1. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture where we have tried to summarize the various kind of operators which are available in the Verilog language with which we can specify the description or the model of the hardware system that we are trying to design or build. So, in the next lecture we shall be looking at some of the examples based on the structures and the constructs which we have seen so far. Thank you.